friends welcome to another video I lost a lot of the footage filming this video I don't know what happened to my camera settings but for some reason like it keeps cutting off when I film I'll figure that out but for now let's just get started on this video I am transforming a chest into a beautiful sunset desert kind of look and hopefully you guys like how it turns out okay see you later Alright, so let's start where I usually start, which is showing you what the piece looks like when I first got my hands on it. So it's got some really nice veneer on top and out on the outside, but it is chipping, peeling, it's really worn. Uh, so it, I definitely don't want to repair it because I'm going to paint this. So that is not necessary like I have no need to save it but I just want to show you guys what it is uh, the inside is in really good shape so that's what matters what's on the inside uh, so I'm gonna start by peeling off as much as I can and let me just give you a little bit of that SMR what is it called uh, you know for you guys to hear this ugly satisfying noises hang on <laughs> Did you enjoy that? I know you enjoyed that. It is ugly satisfying. Okay, for this part that is really hard to get off, I'm gonna hit it up with my heat gun and uh, hopefully that will loosen up the glue and I'll be able to get it off. Let's try it. Okay, and this is what it looks like now that the veneer is off. As you guys can see it's not very pretty so the cedar is generally a liner that goes on the inside and it's covered by cheaper wood and then they put a veneer on top to make it look nice so it's still wood it's still cedar it's just not solid cedar if that makes sense and this is what we look like now that I took the veneer off there's a little bit of uh, bits and pieces of wood so it's definitely gonna need to be sanded but you can see that this is very common in like somewhat modern furniture I mean not always but this is still a cedar chest and it's still wood so they just do um, like a, a cedar lining let me show you the thicker portion is just pine and that's just to save on cost I guess other cedar veneer liner that makes the top be cedar but the outer the thicker portion is not okay so did y'all catch that is essentially the top is essentially poplar because it's got that green hue to it it's poplar and then it had a lining of cedar on the inside to make the entire inside cedar and then a lining of whatever veneer that was on top uh, the sides of it and the bottom part of it I believe it is cedar it's just the top that wasn't for some reason so anyway let's go ahead and sand off all of those bits and pieces of wood that and glue and whatever was left from taking the veneer off and then we'll be able to have a clean blank smooth canvas and get started I have moved inside to my kitchen as you guys know because this is where the light is uh, but also we're gonna work on this I should probably put my wild hair up and maybe we should call this series a wild hair series because yeah I have a feeling this is gonna be a very creative one uh, I kind of have an idea of what I want but we'll see we'll see how it turns out sometimes things take a turn. Uh, first things first, I need to clean this guy. So I am actually, you guys saw me sanding it outside, but I'm probably gonna hit it by hand, just like the edges, uh, and then I will go ahead and clean it. To clean it, I am using a mixed uh, product from Dixie Belle called White Lining. It is a TSP based cleaner to remove any grease or any dirt and then I'm going to wipe it with just water to remove any excess or residue from the TSP based cleaner. cleaner. So that's what I'm doing and then we'll move on to prime it because I have a bad feeling that this one is going to bleed through because it's an older piece. A lot of people used to smoke inside their house and so I want to make sure that none of that comes through my paint and damages my finish so I'm gonna use this product called uh, Boss from Dixie Belle as well it is a primer that blocks odor stains smells and all that stuff it's really thin and it's also water-based so I am doing it inside it does have a little bit of a smell but nothing too crazy like it smells uh, well way 
milder than shellac does and it goes on milky but it dries really thin and clear. If you have seen any of my videos before, you know that I always prime with shellac because it blocks smells and stains coming through. Pine is notorious for bleeding through and I wasn't sure if all of this was pine or poplar. I still think it's poplar because it has that green color to it, but at the end of the day, uh, it could bleed through just as much and I'm not going to paint it white, but it will be light colors and I don't want any of that stain coming through, so I am definitely making an effort to prime this. And then one of the things that I like to do is you know you don't overwork it so try and apply it as smooth as you can in one direction uh, again this is gonna be a texture finish so I'm not too super worried about it but I still want to go in one direction and try not to overwork it so now that it has dried it looks exactly like nothing has happened uh, which means it soaked it right up so I am gonna go ahead and apply another coat at least on top to be just to be better safe than sorry, I guess. Okay, so you guys had to understand that it's really hard for me to show you pieces like this because they are very intuitive like <laughs> you just gotta grab a brush and pick your colors and go with it so it's kind of hard to tell you to do a tutorial because there's just like no rhyme and reason again it's very intuitive so this will probably be a video of you guys mainly watching me to see if you pick up something from there I don't know but anyway this is the color palette and I already did one side, like I said, I like to test it, see if that's the right direction or if I want to change anything. But this is the first coat, so generally if it doesn't work out, I don't care because I usually do multiple layered looks. So um, yeah, it's not going to matter. I mean, it will, but it won't, if that makes any sense at all. So my colors are, for now, Dixabelle, not Dixabelle, Ooh. This is Jolie Moroccan Clay, which I adore. And um, I also have Jolie Zen, which I also adore. You guys have seen me use them on projects before. So that's where we are. Um, I decanted it. So I am gonna just use up whatever is left in the can to try and uh, finish it. I am going to link two other videos where I have covered this blending technique more in depth. One of them is my cotton candy light refraction desk that I painted for our knees and it was a very softly blended color, lots of different colors on that one. And I also have this other watercolor dresser where I just blend two colors. It is the exact same technique I'm using here. Uh, but yeah, it can, you can, can get different effects so it will be better if you watch those. I don't want to repeat myself with the same videos over and over. So um, after that, I moved on to the top, and again, I'm only using two colors in here. Uh, first coat, I am going to come back on the second coat and pretty much cover all of this because I decided that I wanted like a desert sunset look. So I wanted to incorporate a mix of other colors as well. the second coat I'm going to go ahead and incorporate the rest of the colors that I want to add I want a desert sunset look so I have some pinks some purples orange yellow and my base color white it's not white as that Zen color it's like a neutral so I am mixing those and it's the exact same technique I used on my cotton candy dresser so definitely watch that I know I already said that but it is the same like I said this is a very intuitive blending so I can't really tell you where to put the colors because it depends on how far you went with the other color and what colors you've chosen. In my case, I've chosen colors that blend together really well. And so this time I'm not actually switching brushes because they are very complementary. So when they do mix with each other, it actually makes for a smoother transition uh, from one color into the other. So that's what I'm doing. And it is a little bit brighter than I wanted it to. But again, this is the second layer. I like to work on layers and see uh, how the colors interact with each other. So that's what I'm doing here okay so hopefully you guys can see what I have going on here um, so these are my colors and I'm going for a super toned down uh, 
soft sky like a pastel sky so this is a little like this part is a little too pink for my liking but it, we're only on the second coat so that's okay uh, I'm going to tone it down a little bit and I think to do that I'm just gonna mix in some of this grayed up purple by mixing the purple and orange I get a little bit of a browner color like a muted down toned down which is what I wanted uh, and then I'm incorporating some pinks some yellows again blending and always having my water bottle next to me to kind of mist it when it gets too thick because it because it is chalk paint and chalk paint can be um, very thick sometimes so lots of blending be patient and trust the process I lost a lot of the footage, I don't know why my camera stopped recording, but this is the image I had in mind when, with this color palette. After I finish it, I start looking at cacti and agave and desert kind of planties to paint on top of it. And so I went with that blue agave, so here is my next color palette to kind of mix it in and do something fun. Like I said, I've lost a lot of the footage, so I'm just showing you the bits that I was able to recover mainly from Instagram. Uh, but I'm doing essentially what I did on my Monstera Leaf vanity where I traced the image. I kind of sketched it out with a chalk pencil because it's easy to clean. And then I went ahead and painted it with a brush and a mix of my colors on that second palette I just showed you. And then I start shading and darken it to add some detail to give it some depth and dimension. And actually just to give it more uh, definition because you know I want to enhance those shadows and those highlights. So if I show you the before and after whenever I was working on this process, the, the, one, the picture on the right is at the very beginning when I had kind of just laid down the color and the one on the left you can see more of the highlights, more of the edges and the shadows and it, and it made a huge difference. So after that, once it was dried, I went ahead and started to seal it and I decided to seal it using a uh, Dixie Belle Gator Hide which I applied with a sponge. The reason why I went with Gator Hide instead of wax or uh, something lighter is because Gator Hide is water repellent and I can totally see this piece being used as a coffee table for somebody who has a small space and they need extra storage. You know, you can use it as a coffee table and then store like your winter clothes, your extra sheets or stuff that you don't use regularly but that take up a lot of space and then you can put it in a small apartment or a small like a tiny home. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to have a lot of durability is what I'm saying. I did about three coats on top and just two on the sides. Uh, it is water repellent and I also have another video of course uh, the one where I did my chairs where I used uh, Gator High for the first time so you can watch that one as well and let me show you the final product because it's so cute! Oh, and don't forget to follow me on the social media so you can see projects like this one that don't make it into YouTube videos. Okay, for reals. Okay, love you. Goodbye. Was that you living in someone else's dreams? <laughs>